if you signed contracts back in February ish, twenty three, and you were settling in May, you did a five percent deposit on the block. Now I'm imagining that's only like what hundred grand. Well, yeah, about hundred hundred and ten k or something. Hundred and ten k to secure this signing on that. Three months later, you've settled. Three months later, you've started. And 13 months later, we're sitting here and this thing is created. Just about, just that is finish. critical information. And I, and I, I do believe it. And, I, and I, I picked it with you on the last one. There's got to be an end sale on this that well exceeds eight or nine mil. There has to be. Three. Two, one, bod is live. Oh. <laughs> All right. So today we're talking about Justin's new haircut, his beard trim, and the fact that at the age of 40, he pulled his uh, his hamstring. Yes, I did. No, nah, last week I looked at the podcast. It looked like a woolly moment for me, so time to clean it up. <laughs> he's uh, he's turning... awards tonight, so i got to... I gotta make myself look younger. He's turning. Yeah. He's turning into much more of the professional. I like it. Yeah, yeah. And the hammy's the hammy's not good, mate. But we'll see. In all seriousness, we're talking today about this uh, this beautiful property at ninety Brush Road, Wombrel. You know what number it was this morning when you're driving? I did, but I do now. Ninety Brush Road, Wombrel, which is situated on the uh, sunny central coast of New South Wales uh, within Australia. And uh, it's the first time I've been to this property, and it's an absolutely beautiful property. I do believe that it's going to um, do what your last big development did um, in McGee Street, Wombrel, and knocked the record out of the park by millions and millions of dollars. I dare say this will do the same thing. I'm putting it out into the universe because I usually know what happens, and I'll pick the last one. Uh, but it is. It's this big, beautiful, architectural property on two and a half acres and it's just a mammoth of a thing and I think it's kind of just it's really set the scene for Wombrel and for this uh this new style of development in Wombrel. anyway Justin and I were talking about um the best purpose for this podcast talking about this property and what we wanted to talk about today is not the aspects of the property or what looks amazing in the property or what sets it apart. That's part of it. But a big part of today is talking about the actual process of this property. I think a lot of a lot of listeners, um, a lot of viewers, those that have been reaching out have been saying to us, hey, like, we love what you're doing, Justin. It's, they're amazing properties. We'd love to pick your brain, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I thought it would be a good idea, um, Justin and I thought it would be a good idea to sort of go through the process mm-hmm. of building this pinnacle property um, from start to finish, what you followed, what you did, what you thought about, and ultimately what created this 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 amazing, you know, ultimately once in a lifetime property on the Central Coast. So uh, let's let's go through the process, not just the aspects, not just the beauty of it, but the actual process to create it. Mm-hmm. And um, we'll talk about the good. We can talk about the bad as well. Mm-hmm. And then for a viewer or a listener in this podcast, by the end of it, um, you'll ultimately be able to go, wow, you know, one day I could do that too. And, and I know how Justin did it and I know why Justin did it. So take it away. Um, yeah, so. Start from the start. Nice wrap up, mate. Um, Not a wrap up, it's a start up. Yeah. <laughs> My, my back of my head will be burnt by the by the end of this podcast. I'm going to need a sombrero. <laughs> so obviously at the end of McGee, sort of when the settlement was coming in, this one sort of popped up. I seen it and then sort of was just thinking about it. It's not one that I just went bang yet. It's like I just thought about it a bit and I had a different, uh, I guess a bit of a different vision for this one. I sort of was going to try and work with the home that we had. I had an existing DA, which is always good as I've always said on on these shows before, having the existing DA is always uh, very beneficial. Um, number one, speeds up the process. If you like the existing DA, you can work with it. Number two, you can go with a with a um, modification of the DA, which is obviously takes shorter time to do a full DA. Or you can really kick it off as long as you keep the same footprint like we did with McGee, like we've done with this one. You kick it off, you can start early. Why are you changing doing the modification of the DA and then it just becomes, you know, DA number B, you know, or, or two, whatever. So um, that's sort of what we did with this one. So I had an existing DA by another architect um, and enabled us to be able to demo the house straight away and um, kick off the design pretty quick, and as I've always said, you know, with our architects FBC, they um, that, that did, yeah, they do a lot of our developments uh, designs. We 
I were able to kickstart pretty quick with them, so that's what we did. But I had a different vision. I sort of was going to go with let's try and you know spend circa I don't know one five to one eight maybe, and sort of renovate the home that was sort of there, but and do a bit of a cookie cutter maybe um, Hampton sort of home on this on this two and a half acres, um, and maybe try and attract like a uh, I don't know like a, a five five and a half sort of so. And then obviously you know one just. And then so we end up secure. We I secured a pop- property before McGee settled. We had a three month settlement on it. I think it was did a bit of work during that time. The vendor wanted more, but um, we knocked a couple of hundred thousand off it. So that was that was pretty good. But it was a particular property that you know you couldn't really just move into the home that was here. It had already been gutted. Like someone was about to start the reno on it. Um, so it had to be sort of a particular buyer, someone who wanted to do this, or someone who was willing to work with another builder and build himself. So, so that's how we started with this one. We ch- changed the design. I kept coming back and I'm like, nah, I can't help myself. I want to do something pretty special. I want to have these sort of signature sort of developments. I want to tr- sort of change, the, I guess, the scope of the Central Coast. Um, we're getting super, super good sales here, still are now. And I think uh, next year we're going to see some, a lot of ones that might, might even tip the 10 mark. Um, you know, only recently a sale got done by the guys at McGrath, eight and a half thousand, eight and a half million for a unit in Terrigal. So the money's still around, um, and I just would like to change the scope. Like everyone keeps talking about McGee, and I just want to have these signature properties around here that, you know, that are going to be remembered, I guess, again in 20 years, and you can still drive past them. It's going to be pretty cool. So that was the that was the the process. I bought it through McGrath as well. Um, that was the process of just starting and get onto it at the start, and and, and then we started the design. Cool. So let, let's go into a little bit of dot point detail on that um, that start process. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you've you've given us a good amount, but let's just go a little bit further. Talk to me about sort of like the timeline. How long it took you to um, to settle the property, to start the build. Um, you know what? What changed that design as well? So you went from like a sort of five five point five mil end realization value to you know you wanted to create something to sell for you know eights, nine, tens, etc. Mm-hmm. Um, just give me some more detail in that start process, really around really around timelines and change of like outcome of product that you wanted to create. Um, any any other advice that you lent on as well, whether it be from McGrath, etc., to really. To get started, I guess this one we I think I settled maybe May ish, like somewhere mid last year. Yeah, um, so May twenty three. Yeah, so yeah, we're we're uh, we've moving moving pretty quick as you can see. We'll be done here in probably six weeks. Um, but that's amazing. Yeah, but then we 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 bowled the house down uh, just in between other jobs. Just send guys here, bowled the house down, got it all clear, and then we probably didn't really kick this thing off till proper till start of October. Um, so now we're in October now, and we're twelve months in. I think it'll. Uh, a bit of 13 month build but um, I think normally something like this would be more 18 to 2 months to 2 years but so we, we um, when we secured the property we started around then and the timeline was I got as much work as I could get done so you done. secured in May 23 or did you secure a bit earlier oh, I settled in May 23 wow when did you mm-hmm. sign contracts um, exchange yeah 3 months before that wow so that's fast so yeah. it was it was really like February 23 yeah you got this opportunity through McGrath Within three months, you'd ultimately like I know you had. So I did a long, like, the three month settlement. Yeah. Um, like I've always said before, that I'll, I'll try. I could try to get a little bit more, but it worked out well anyway. But um, she was pretty keen to move on. Um, the vendor. So yeah. and during that time was the same thing, right? Hey, let's. Um, so I contacted the old architect. I've met him before, which was which was handy. We got all got all the information off him that I needed because yep. he'd had a lot of stuff done here. Yep. Uh, obviously, an existing DA, you need especially on on an acreage, you need a, a fair bit of. Um, Fair info and documentation required, so I was able to obtain all that, got all that, went through it all. Sort of was going to tweak that design, and I was like, no, nah, I'm going to do something special again. Yeah, yeah. I just, I just, yeah. You know, when you do these cool designs, it's like the next one needs to be better, the next one needs to be better. So, like I said, these signature ones, it's just an appetite that I have for it. And, sure. and I think um, hopefully other people do. I'm sure they do. And like I said, I wanted to change the scope around here. It's your right work, mate. You always say that's your why. You're yeah. Right work, yeah, exactly. So that's why that is the why. That's, that's that why. That is the why. Like if I just did a stock standard build, it'd still be nice and everything like that, but it wouldn't be me why. So yeah, th- this is definitely the why part of it. So we got as much work as we could. Then I contacted FBC Design and we tried to, they, they talked to the other architect and we just tried to move this thing pretty quick. Come up with a brief and I was like, you know what? I've always really wanted to do like a, a, a cool sort of Mediterranean darker style home. Yeah. Yeah. Um, everyone, you know, light and bright is is really cool, and you know, ninety percent of the homes that everyone's doing are is that. Um, but I want to do something different, and Dark I did, mystique. 
Yeah, and I didn't want to go. And it just suits this backdrop. Like, yep. seriously, look at the backdrop. You yep. can't have a White Hampton saint in front of that. No. That's the way I think. You've suited it. Um, so it's all about, it's not just about the property. It's not about the area. It's about, like, these backdrops. And, and I just pictured this home, this earthy coloured home just yep. plonked in the, behind these trees, right? So, so I said, this is what I want to do. But I didn't want to go too Mediterranean, too, like, curvy, too soft and, you know, a bit old school. I wanted to add a bit of contemporary yep. flair to it. As you can see, we've got all these overhangs and that's what we did. So I um, got on to got on the guys that got on the architects and we really started to push this thing. Um, and then I, I spoke to my certifier, I rang him and I said, "Listen, can I do the same as McGee? Can I sort of start this process a bit early with the existing DA, get the demo done, get some earthworks done? Why are these things ticking off?" And I probably gained another three months during that period yep. of working off the old DA. Yep. And then and then they just change it over and then it clicks in. You submit all your drawings again to your new certifier, to your certifier, and then away you go with the new design. So that's how. That first part of the process happened. I'm always I'm always ticking off structures. I know, like I've said before, architects like to get their stuff done and then the structural engineer comes in and it just takes too long. For me, I'm lodging it. I'm getting the, getting the DA drawings done. I'm lodging it. And I'm doing the structure drawing straight away. And I know there might be a little bit more work between the two of us or the three of us after the DA comes out in tweaking some stuff. The DA might ask, the, the council might ask you to do it. But at the end of the day, I've probably gained another three or four months because I haven't waited for the approval in DA, so that's how we that's how we kick kicked it off, and that's how we kicked most of them off. So I think that's all critical information you just went through, because like the thing that we went over a lot in the last podcast and probably all podcasts is that time is money, and when you're developing and you're just, you know, yes, you got hold costs. A lot of people place a lot of emphasis on hold costs, so I'm paying interest on this block for six months and I'm waiting and I'm waiting and waiting. Yes, that's that's the that's part of the issue, mm-hmm. okay. But a lot of the, the issue is with time is that. Um, you could have you could have developed the product and sold the product and realized that capital in that wasted time that you had as well. So mm. I think that's something to really place, and I think you've placed great emphasis on it, is if you signed contracts back in February-ish, 23, and you were starting, you were settling in May, three I minutes five, later. I did a 5% deposit too. And you did a 5 de- So these are all critical pieces of information that I don't want to lose, right? You did a 5% deposit on the block. Now I'm imagining that's only like, what, 50, 70, 100 grand, give or take, maybe a little uh, bit more. What was it, 100, uh, 225? Yeah, about 110 k or something. 110 k to secure this, signing on that. Three months later, you've settled. Three months later, you've started. And 13 months later, we're sitting here and this thing is created. Just about, just that is finish. critical information. Like, and that is, and I, and I, I do believe it. And I, and I, I picked it with you on the last one. There's, there's got to be an end sale on this that well exceeds eight or nine mil. There has to be. Yeah, I just think this is pretty special. Obviously, um, then you sort of go to design it and then you say, oh, you know, I'll, I'll build it for this and I'll, I'll you know, try and hit up a seven again or something. But at the end of the day, there's nothing like this here on the coast um, and there's nothing like this here on the coast on two and a half acres in Wombrill right near the beach generally people who, who buy houses you know you know, of this value they, they're going to send their kids to a private school and obviously grandma's, one of the best ones the grandma's right there behind right, that bush yeah, so that's, that's there's all these sort of uh, I guess attractive features for buyers for this one but I just know that um, as I've always said before these signature ones they they can be a bit Scary. They're well, not scary, but they can, they they push your limits. You know, they they really, really, really push your limits from start to finish. And you got to understand that your these ones create. You got to create the product to sell it. So you need to cut. You can't take shortcuts. And you was, can't say, "Oh, I was going to do that that feature wall, or I was going to put that in there, but now I'm not going to. I'm going to cut back on costs." You can't do that with these, and I won't do it with these, yeah. and I'll risk it yeah. to get that. Buy it or walk in and go. This is it. And, I'm gonna buy it. And and, I, and like I said, that that the reason you do that isn't because you love splashing money. The reason <laughs> you do that is because you love creating artwork. Okay, yes. which you just said was your why, and we've spent time on yep. that, right? And I think that's always going to be your struggle in life. I think is you'll you'll set out mm. to do to do a, a basic the basic you know whatever it. and you can't do it. You have you have to you have to create something new and special. And like I said to you, I drove down the road this morning and you've got all these homes with acreage in Wombrel, which is still very still, scarce, uh, yeah. it's scarce, right? Yeah. And then you get over the hill and you look at the bat, like the final, <laughs> the final house on the street mm. and it's just this mammoth. Yeah. And I've a, always had that. that it's, it's God. Yeah. It's called, you should have called it God. <laughs> but I've always, and just so you know, this thing, this, this place is called La Belle. La God. Yeah. La God. It's a, uh, it's <laughs> a bit of a Mediterranean <laughs> name, but um, we'll have it out the front, but. 
there's a peak in the hill when you come down this street, and um, obviously we've got a really cool side render profile shot of this. We haven't got a market. We haven't put it. I think most people who are watching this would have seen the renders, but it hasn't gone out to market, but it pretty much has gone to the database now, and then we'll go to market. But um, I always had a vision of when you get to the top of that crest of that hill there, you just see it. I did. And these three trees are going to come down very shortly. So. Indeed. <laughs> yeah. I was, so I, and all these so things, I was like, texting, I was it's not just about building this year. Yeah. It's about when you're driving, all these things go through your so head. So, true story. No. It happened about half an hour ago, yep. maybe 45 yep. minutes ago. Yeah. yeah, I said, you stop at the top yeah. of the hill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm driving. I'm messaging. I should not be texting on my phone. No. Uh, so, I'm, I'm texting. I'm like, like it's a question. And I, didn't, I couldn't even say much. So, I just said number, yeah. question mark, and you go 90. Is that what you mean? And then I just got to the hill and I went, Poof, oh, well, there she is. Should be asking. <laughs> I didn't need to ask the question. Okay, I want to bring this back. So you said something that's um, it, it's hit social media and it's been very receptive to a lot of our audience, right? And you said, and I'll see if I can get your exact wording right, you've got to strike a deal at the start. You yes. even kind of said it like that. It was that American accent, yeah. right? You turned gangster for five minutes with your new beard and your, your, your new haircut. Um that is such a critical point because you've just gone over how you you, you cut a deal at the start, right? You yep. got a deal at the start. Um, it was an amazing opportunity. You've upselled the value in this product. Um, talk to me a little bit about like what you went through in those that settlement period. For example, in terms of the money, like you had yeah. to, you had to get some money together. You had yep. to get some finance together. You had to get enough money to create this godlike creature. Yeah. You couldn't just you couldn't scrummage on money. So you had to like talk to us through that because the money's a big piece, right? The money's a big piece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The audience to go, okay, well, if I'm not going to take shortcuts, if I'm going to have enough money to create a godlike creature. What did you go through? What were some of the key points? Well, at the start, obviously, they wanted a bit more and I just left it. Yep. And then um, other people were interested, but then just kept buying me time. Because I was, I really wanted it, but it, it wasn't. I was, I was still trying to work it all out in my head. Um, obviously, I was coming to the end of the settlement with McGee, so I hadn't fully settled there. So I had the money there to sort of do this, but obviously, you got to do drawings. you got to... You know, by the time you start a build like this and you're doing architecturals and engineering, yeah, you might have put a 5% deposit down, but then you get your stamp duties and you might be 300K, right? With, Design fees, with, like yeah, up. exactly. So there's, a, there's a still a bit of a process for you to start building on one like this. I asked if I could use the um, the de- top deposit yep. of the um, McGee sale and I just did that and rolled that into this and then um, started. So that was um, that was a bit of a negotiation thing, but it wasn't it wasn't something that happened point, straight right? away. It's, it's, it wasn't they weren't too hundred percent keen. I still was going to do it, but that just made it. A bit. When you come to the end of a development and they're like this, and they, you know, you, you div, your total development costs you know up around five mil or whatever they are with building land and everything else, you you, you come to the point of the stick, you you know. You should. And I've worked out. You should be. You know. You might go to a seventy thirty lend, but realistically, by the time you put your money in and you put a bit more in with the build, you get at this point and generally on something like this, you want you're about a fifty fifty lend, right? Do this. That's the way I like to do it. So you know you've got fifty percent skin in the game or something like this, somewhere around them numbers, and and that's what you should have. Um, so when you get to the end of one of these, you've you know you've got a lot a lot tied up. So yeah, so I played that game. Said I'll use it on this property. Of uh, going back and forth for a couple of weeks, and they said yes. So we did, and I just ex- put, and ended up sending that money to this one, and that's how we got it sort of started quicker. And the moment we settled on that, then I settled on this, and away we went. Just going back, when did you settle on the other property in Wombrol, um in the street in the gate? I think I actually settled there in like April or May. How funny is that? Mm. And so you're really, that's another... I, just, I don't I, like I, having, so I've come to a point in developments, obviously when you start out, you have gaps, right? You have... Which is what I want to talk about. Yeah, and I do my, like you have the, you do have gaps, right? When you start out or when you're flipping, you know, you do. But when you start to develop more, um, for me, gaps are boring. Gaps are I, I, not I, just boring. I, they're non-profitable. They're non-profitable. It's time. I'm not. I'm not doing something that I love. So I it's try killer. now. I'm trying to eliminate the gaps. So obviously we've got the other one at Forest. So there's two on with you, and then we've got um, and yeah, we're on the hunt for, for another one now that this one's coming towards the end. And I'm just trying to eliminate gaps. So I want to sort of get to a point where you know there's there's a fair few on the go. Still maybe some. You know I know you say no, but, but there's no, there's no client work. You know we've got. Th- there's three, four, five on the go, and then there's two NDA, and then there's two side acquisitions, and I don't want gaps. So yeah. for me, I wanted to start that process, and that's why I wanted to strike the deal just before McGee settled. And look, you've got a risk of they only put a five percent deposit down on that one as well, which I accept, and you've got a risk of these things falling over. Like they could have said, "Oh no, I'm 
sacrificing me um me 350 k I can't get it done you know and but as a risk I was sort of willing to take I've been doing them since I bloody even was flipping properties you know I was buying properties before other ones sell and yeah and and not having deposits and not having loans approved and putting deposits down so I think that's very that incredible. risk You're process has been going time. for a long time and <clears throat> even back then at 20 something years old and then you you, you say, yeah, I've got cash here. I've got, you know, 40K. Here's the deposit for the house, but I haven't got a loan yet. I've come to like the 11th hour and I still haven't got a loan. So those risks have gone all the way through and they're still going through. You know, yeah. it's just that the things get bigger and the risks get bigger. But yeah. I guess at the end of the day, it's a good old saying, no, if you don't risk it, you don't get it. But it's like, um, yeah, so that was, I guess that was the, 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 the process of this one and, that that was the start of it, and that's how we got into this and and kicked this one off. Okay, so you got the deposit down, you've got the opportunity secured, yep. even though you're still settling your other record hitting property. Yep. Um, what else? Like, was there anything else, sort of financial, legally, legal, anything that you can think of that sort of popped up in that settlement period that you had to handle as well? Because um, you don't have a lot of time. You've got yeah. three months, you've got your deposit, you've got to secure the balance of the money. How did you secure the balance of the money? What style of lending did you go? Um, like, what, what sort of did you negotiate through that? Like, don't go super, yeah, yeah. super granular, uh, but just yeah. give us a little bit of detail. Because so the money's a big part. So there's a lot of different lendings you can get, obviously, and these ones, like I said, it's really, you'll start off 70-30 usually, so that's LVR, so you might... You generally borrow 60 or 70 and put in 30 or 40. Um, but like I said, by the time you put all your other money in, you pull back by the time you sort of start the project and you've, you've outlaid for the land and then, you know, everything else that starts to build because you've got to understand development finance is purely only, it's 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 separated. People think it's all together, but it's actually separated. It'll be land, land acquisition and it'll be a certain amount of money that goes into that part, right, which you can secure straight away. And that might be on a 70-30 lend or a 60-40 lend, depending on the block and the situation, the location and all these other things with the lender, the particular lender. And then you present, so straight so straight away, the reason why I get my drawings done as quick as I can as well, which I've, I think I've mentioned before, is because I need to get the renders done. I can't get valuations or good valuations without renders. I've said it a million times before. So it's not only starting the project as quick as you can and ticking off the time while you haven't got holding costs. It's also, I cannot do renders realistically without drawings because the drawings get given to the render company, the 3D enhanced images, and we create that. And I've got to have a finishes and fixtures schedule. And then they can make this thing look like it does at the end before you even start the build. So there's there's, a, there's many factors around getting shit done as quick as you can because it, I need to get valuations here. So you've secured the land, you've got that, and then it kicks into a construction finance. That construction finance is determined on your end valuation. So you, as I've said before, you want the end valuation to be as best as you can. Um, it'll give you better lending capabilities such as LVRs. It'll it'll give you more money to lend for the construction and less money for you to put in. So, um, you know, because what they do is they go, right, oh, well, yeah, here's a two point something million dollar build. We're going to put that against your land and join it together. And then it's going become to become a construction, like a land and construction fund, you know, mechanics of a, of a development uh, funding loan and then what what they do is they go right they base it on a 70 or whatever LBR some people might lend you 75% LBR but it's all based on that evaluation yep. and that's why you've got to get shit done as and quick you, as well because like you can't start this construction until you've got all them done of course that, that you summed that up so perfectly then and, and it, you really nailed every point and it was and we've spoken about this on the triple M model okay a few podcasts ago you've got to strike a deal at the start right You've got to have your designs done at the start once you've secured the deal. Mm-hmm. You've got to get that done fast with the architects yep. and you can't be contingent on like the, the structurals, et cetera. you just got to work the magic, like you said. Yeah, you don't, you don't need the structures done during that time. You've got to get the, get, get, get the vision. The, get the vision, yep. right? Get the creation, get the artwork. Yep. Then you've got to get that to get renders. Yep. So you've got that. Once you got to like you're still not even really at construction finance yet, you've just got really the acquisition finance there. Yep. Yep. How did the end valuation stack up on this? Did it did it go quite well? Could it have been better? Oh, look, these ones are hard. Like, like yeah. I said, like they're hard. Valuations on these ones are hard because no, I guess change you trying to change the change the scope around here. You're trying to create products yep. that no one which we has really about. done. The valuers can't see that if it hasn't been done yeah, before, sure. right? So it's it's quite hard. So yeah. we triple is- as I said before, the triple M model is easier because they've seen it before, but. 
This one, I, I don't, I can't remember exactly, but I think the vow might have stacked up. Look, at the start, might have stacked up around like 5.2 or something. Yeah. I just can't remember. But then I can't remember if it was the same vow as I had before in McGee, but I said, listen, go to McGee, drive down there. Yeah. It'll give you an indication of this, what yeah. we build and how we build it and and the finishes and all that. So we he, we took him there and he went through there and I think it added on maybe another seven or eight hundred K. Okay. So, you, so I think I, I think maybe the NVR might have come in at like five point eight. Okay. Or something five point okay. nine. So that was pretty good for lending anyway for something like this. But and then you yeah, you can borrow up to your sixty or seven percent L V R. But I think it might have been around that five the mid to five, late fives, but it was all but I got extra because of that 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 previous build. So Hopefully, maybe on the next sort of signature one, we can go right. Well, there's that one. There's this one, and yeah, and you can you because you got two proofs now. Yeah, you've got two proofs, yeah. and and again, what you said, like the 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 banks in particular on the acquisition line. You got to put more money in these ones because you're never going to get them out of stuck up. So that's it. Yeah, that's yeah, just the way it is. yeah, yeah. And L- LVR for everyone that's listening, loan to value ratio. So on an acquisition line, it's simply like this is this is what you buy the property for. They'll lend you up to up to here. Okay. It's very a- similar a- when you seven. have a home loan. Yep, you get eighty twenty. Yeah, right. You put twenty exactly. percent. You know, the banks always get a whole twenty percent of your own exactly. or your own money it's the same situation but when they move when they move to construction or development finances as um justin said they'll take n value or grv gross realization value so whatever you'll sell it for like justin said 5.8 million and then they'll give you 65 70 yeah. percent of that and you're so. working with the qs at that time so you'll be providing drawings you'll be providing renders you'll be providing uh build costs you'll be providing a building contract and you'll be providing finishes and fixture schedule and that yeah. that's then base what the value of the home may become yeah at, yeah. At, at the generally which, the least, which is why you got to do what you're saying. You got to you got to get your design drawings done fast. You got to get your renders done. Mm. You got to build your comparables. You got to build your brief right, yeah. so you can get these guys to value this as, as yeah. high as you can. That was amazing, mate. I want to I want to go now. Is there any? Okay, so question: Is there anything else in that pre-construction stage that was critical to understand as part of the process on this development, or do you want to start to move into post May twenty three construction? build of this you know there's all other little things i guess i can mention like we've got a 150 square meter studio here we wouldn't have got that it was an existing garage here there's just these little additions that were not little that's a big addition but these little things i think you need to look for in a property that can give you just that little bit of extra cream on top you know like it's very hard to be getting anything bigger that's the second dwelling and bigger that that's not a full separate you know strata dwelling that's bigger than 60 square meters. It's very hard to do these days. It's pretty much a typical size. That's 150 thereabouts. And it's all because we had an existing huge garage there. Um, and then the old DA had that as a second dwelling, like a studio. And then we changed it to like a little house. So it's, you know, you've got your kitchen, you've got your butler's pantry, you've got your, your bathroom, you've got your bedroom, you've got sort of a, two sort of living areas, which is pretty cool for a second dwelling. So you've got to look for these extra benefits that are going to make buyers go wow how do you get that gee that's a massive addition to this home i can have another person actually living there pretty much at the start i just think you've got to look out for everything look you're going to have a couple of downfalls and things that you buy that's just the way it is there's going to always be things with the property that aren't the greatest there's going to be things that will outweigh it and make the greatest um so you just got to buy things that you know that are going to boost you at the end and reduce your time at the start that's that's the way i was unless you've got Squillions and squillions and billions of dollars, and it doesn't really matter. But yeah, that's that's, that, that's an important point. Before we get to construction, like how how have you? Because this is a good parcel of land, right? In, in a in a premier suburb, two point five acres, like you said. How have you how have you really maximised the opportunity on this block by the build that you've created? Because that's one example, right? You've built. Yeah, this, so I, I could live there. Yeah, so obviously this block comes pretty level. It's pretty. It's a pretty good set of acres, to be honest, um, and cleared. But at the start, it sort of came in and sort of dropped down with the old house. So I thought, well, let's utilise that. And you come in the front, and you've got this really cool, sleek sort of design that's, we, you know, and no, that maximising height here, we haven't got any neighbours, right? So I'm not going to impede anyone's views. So I'm going to try and push this this ceiling height and this height of this building to as much as I can. Right, we are these these overhangs do do tip over the just over the eight and a half meter height. So I said we need to maximise this as much as we can. Like where Andrew's walking through now, you can see the doors are two and a half times the size of him. And you know we've got four point three meter ceilings through that living area and stuff. So it was about maximising that size because people need to. I don't know, like people say, oh, like and it's a big home. We're up five hundred square meters or something, but. And then you got that 150 square meters. When people look at homes, and they go, oh, it's, a, you know, it's 400 square meters. It's pretty good. But then you've got 2.4 meter, 2.4 high ceilings. I'm like, I 
really believe that the value of a home should be based on like cubic meters, yep. right? Yeah, I've fine. said this a million times before. Like, if you've got a 400 square meter home and it's 2.4 ceilings, you, you, you build all your walls are 2.4 high. So your construction costs are a lot lower, right? It, it, I, th- I just think that how, how houses should be valued on, on cubic metres, not square metres. So you might have a 500 square metre home like this and then you've got 4.3 metre ceilings. Our lower ceilings are 3.2. Like, it's it's pretty nuts. So I wanted to maximise on that. Um, I agree with what you're saying. And I've said that to you. Like, they, it, it's it's got this... I keep going back to it. But it's, got this, of, it's got this grand but godlike yeah, feature yeah, yeah. because it's not just wide. Nah. It's up. And it's up. when you're here on acreage... And everyone around you is looking up to you, yeah, right? Well elevated and you're here. in here. It, 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 I find that there is value on the height, a hundred percent, because yep. you, you're looking over. You're looking over the land. You look like it's it's. it's well, you got windows, doors, and you got I windows. There's more and value in it personally. I like, I'm saying yeah. there's at least equal value that you're going out yeah. and you're going up yeah. to create this grandeur yeah. aspect. Yeah, so, and then it was just all these little things like you guys talking about before coming down the street, opening that front door and being able to see straight through the middle of the house out of this sun coming up behind you over your land. So just all these little things that go into a design and then obviously maximizing the space down there that, I, that as much as I could with that, with that, um, with that studio. So, and I wanted to really incorporate all this sort of this, this tree scenery behind us and all the greenery. So a, there's a lot of things that go into a big pool at the back. And then from the end of that pool, this is all really action area. From the end of that pool, it's just your land. Kids want to zoom around the motorbike, whatever, so be it. They can. Um, that's that's sort of how I vision this thing at the start, and and um, how I wanted to maximise every sort of space that I could, and get as much light in here as I could. You know, so yeah, that's why you get all these little highlights with the other pop up roof above it, and and everything like that. Yeah, beautiful. Okay, we're in the construction, mate. Yep. Talk to talk to me. So you've you've got a like you said a 13, 13 month fast build process for what you've built mm. um you haven't just been building this you've been obviously you've you and Goodness. your team have been on, on other projects as well so yeah. you you've you know you've you've been busy mm. um talk start to talk to me through the timeline of this like what what were your considerations what were your focus points like well i always said that i i felt that i could like we built mcgee in i think 13 months as well and we had some severe rain over that one as well we've had some pretty pretty average rain here as well um but i guess it's managing though i always said i need i want to get this done you know in, before 2025 you know end of 2024 obviously that's by kicking off and then you've got a christmas period in between as well it's about managing like sometimes your cost may increase a little bit and i talked to it with my contractors and everything you, you, like we hold, we contain costs pretty well in our developments. Like you know, like this is a this is a pretty insane build and a pretty costly build. But there's ways that you can manage them that might not suit the contractor or the trade. But at the end of the day, it's you that's forking out the money every month. So I, I feel I manage these developments quite differently to a client build. Um, bit more not pushy, but just not so much sequence. Like all right, let's get the spark in for four days and let's all rough in and be happy with and put the sheets on. You know, let's get the plumber in to do the same thing. He's got the whole floor. There's no one gets the whole fucking floor of these ones. I'm sorry, but they don't. You can't give someone the whole floor, right? So there's times, and yeah, it pisses people off, but you know what? If you want to work on these and we want to do them quick, fucking, that's just the way it is. And if you don't like it, well, that you're to treat it as tough titties. You know, it's just the way it is, you know, because you've get, every month, you know, you might, you might do a sequence that's not generally typical in a normal construction build for mm-hmm. a client, that that is is tweaked a bit and a bit different. You've you've got someone doing something at the same time. You might pay an extra three grand for that, but you know what? If you've gained yourself a month, you you're saving yourself twenty or twenty five k towards the end of the build. So people need to understand that. So yeah, I do feel that the sequence of these constructions are completely different, and it's more like I've parked I park myself here at the end of them. My, my office is here now. Not I don't walk into King Kong office anymore. Uh, they're my baby, and I sit here and I and I and I don't micromanage, but I watch and I help Youngie out and I help all the guys out where I can. And while doing the other stuff, they're obviously got to do when you run a business. And yeah, and it's just every day. I think every day with this, the sequence or the schedule will change, right? And it's sort of weekly that these things are sort of these scheduling and these are done weekly, so it's a bit different. But if you want to build these things as quick as we do, that's just the way it is. If I did this and gave people the floor or whatever and gave people an area. This is an 18 month build any day of the week. Like you got one's cross ocean view driver getting built over three years for God's sake. Like this is 18 months build, two years any day of the week. So 
but that might be for a client. Not I can't. But it goes back to that time bit again because yeah. if you because if you're, you're trying to time well, that's, you're that's, trying this, to time the so end of the sale as yeah, well. This, but... Yeah, exactly. Okay, so that's just so important. So if you didn't have the DA right, and let's say that you you waste six months there, like mm. just for argument's sake, you got six months there, you got another at least six months on the build. That's yep. a year. In a year, you've created this ultimately. Now, in a year on a, on a good project, this weight, you'd expect it there to be a mil to two million in it, right? Yeah. You've just cost yourself a million bucks. I don't care how you skin yeah. it because you were slow at the start. Yeah. You were slow at the middle. Yeah. You were slow with the end sale, which we'll yeah. talk about in the, in a second, right? You weren't proactive. But yeah? might and you just cost yourself a million bucks. Yeah, but and that's a whole by, other development. Instead of maybe tweaking a few things and here and there, you might increase your bill by 100K or something. But that's, 100%. that's the speed of it. But... People got to understand too as well, like if people have got the money to buy these, it's such that I think they're such an attractive buy because like I said, we're, I think we're creating things that no one else is really developing on the Central Coast. Scarcity. And yeah, yeah, yeah um, our own sort of signature model. But at the same time, if someone was to step in here and be, you know, I want to, I want to, I want to buy a two and a half acres in Wombor and I want to build this super amazing home, their process as a mum and dad or whatever you want to call them, their process is going to be three to four years before they turn that key on something like this. I can tell you that now. The relationships aren't there, right? You're trying to you secure the land. You're trying to find an architect. You're trying to find a builder. You might have a project manager that might work and they don't have the, they don't have the relationship. So by the time I reckon realistically a mum and dad or a buyer of this sort of property buys the land, they're not, they're not even, I don't even think they're getting close to even construction within 12 months, maybe more probably Correct. more after DA. The, the architects are just going to take their time with them because they're not regular customers. The engineer, they've got to find the engineer that's right and it's like, you know, that's that's going to treat them right and do the right things for them. And the whole process is super long for a normal, yep. not, a, not, a, you know, not a developer. So I personally believe someone can get this, pay the money, come in here and do it, or they can go find themselves a block of land and in three to four years they can turn their key and go in there and probably spend a whole lot more And money. again, mate, you got to run the numbers on four years because this property that was purchased in four years' time is worth another yeah, couple of million. Exactly. And they didn't have to go through all the headache and crap no. and communication problems of all of that. No. Do you know no. what I mean? It's yeah. turnkey. Yeah. I talked, well, one I of talked... our other ones is for sale now and it'll, you know, it'll go for a million bucks more. I just know it's Clients, Didn't it just so. sell? I might have, yeah. It just sold for two point two point seven or two point eight. Two point yeah, sweet, yeah. So there you go. So we that's, sold that at that's how that's why I asked you the question yesterday about the about the ball area. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they've sold it. So it's a perfect example, right? That property which we did our first podcast in. You need to wrap this in. No, we were in. No, yes, no, we that, no, that was the other one. That was the one in Old sure? Gosford, yeah, yeah. You sure? That was the old gossip one just straight after that. Was yeah. that? Yeah, in the lounge room there. They look that was identical. <laughs> Andrew, <laughs> as look, he's not his then, I'm right. They look identical. All right. Well, yeah. So, yeah. But anyway, but still the, the point is there. There's increase. I think mil- are, there was yeah. that sold for whatever it sold for. Yeah. What did it sell for? What one? Two years ago, the one that just sold. Uh, 2.3 or something like that. All right. Well, sweet. It's just gone up to like 2. And you've got to understand, and that was, in a, that was in a high market. Yeah, so, so it's just gone for 2.0. It says 500K. Yeah, look, it could sell for 3. Three any day of the week, but um, he didn't haggle around. He, no, nah, he's up. he's he's going to follow his family up in Queensland. I spoke to him the other day. I'll be going back around there. They're lovely people, and they're older, so they're just happy they 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 made a significant amount of money on it. He said that to me. But if they yeah you know, if they played the game right, they'll, they'll get a three any day of the week. But yeah, they've increased. They're, they've capitalised a lot in two years. They've made a few hundred yeah, thousand dollars every year. Yeah, in, like, in a in a, they, in a they quite bought, a market. They bought yeah. in twenty two and it was up. Yeah. They sold now, which is uh, like it's coming back. And okay. still made a profit. They still made the money and they just got to buy turnkey, turnkey off you mm. without all that headache of going through this process yeah. and they've got no idea what they're yeah. doing. And going to probably start next year, they've pro- they'll probably make close to a mill, but yeah, he needs to get out and get up in the Queensland, but he's, uh, this is all a couple of, it's good to see. They're happy. They made 600K in two years or whatever it is and they're all happy in the way they go. Ones like this, yeah, you're right. Yeah, like you, you can wait your four-year process. Your build costs will probably go up and all these kinds of things. Like everyone thinks, oh, when's the building cost going to go down, mate? Has a can of Coke ever gone down once it's gone up? No, nothing goes back Depends down. Depends where you buy from. I bought some yeah, Nothing ever goes back down. I've never seen it and I don't think we, we ever will. So building costs will maintain as they are and they'll go up a little bit later on again. They'll maintain as they are and they'll go up a little bit. They're, they're never going back down. Yeah. And so, so people need to understand that you know markets aren't going down. Nothing right? goes down. Every, so over a twenty year period, this everything house goes keeps up. Keeps going up, right? It's like five hundred meters off the ground. The one we bought, you know, is five times that where we are now, like in five years. So you've got to skyscrapers in the next two years. Yeah, 
So you've got to understand valuing time as well. Uh, timing's huge on, on our end, and I think it's huge on a buyer's end. You've got to, yeah. you've got to buy, and you get, you're going to increase if you, if you do it right. And, you know, the, the more value the property generally, right, the more increase you're going to get. Yep. You buy something for one, you might get an increase over five years to two. You buy something for five, you'll get something for 10, you know, in five years. So yeah. that's sort of, it's just, it's an increase of what the, the property value is worth. So, yeah, there's a lot involved with, and people need to realize that when they're coming in to buy something, they're buying turnkey, boom, they don't have to wait for nothing. They don't have to go through the stress of all the DAs. They don't have to go through the stress well, of the consultants. They don't know. They don't know. And it. they don't know the they process. Know it. So it's going to take three times as long. It's not, and it's, and it's not, it's not just the money. Like, even if they could do it in the same financial way that you could. It's They've still, all got their own it's professional the, careers. It's the headaches, it's the stresses, it's the lack of focus. They, they still lose so much time, yeah. so much money through the, the lack of time. Um, okay, so anything else on the construction uh, process and strategy and what you've what you've been able to really like leverage off? Otherwise, let's start moving, moving into like the, 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 the sale end and the process around that. All right, so I guess the construction here, um, I, I do, like I said, with the schedule and I change it, but at the same time, there's things where I see, like it's pretty much getting, I like to build things exactly the way I vision them, um, whether I'm going to I'm gonna pay more for it, that's the way it is. Um, but you see these certain walls and you love this micro cement, you love this Venetian and you add things along as you go along this because I'm th- constantly thinking about the end sale and if I just put this in here or I just add that or I just do that, it's it's going to probably get me that that figure that I, is in my head, right? So, and like I said, no shortcuts and, and buyers need to understand this. You want to, If you want to find homes like these, you've got to understand. You've got to find ones where the person isn't going to take any shortcuts and they're going to put everything they can into it. Um, but the build process has been pretty good. Like you said, we've had builds on the other other ways, uh, other places, but and we're starting two more now, which are getting dug, but I keep the same team you know, um, on, on our projects. And, and I've generally, um, yeah, when we run our developments, it's the same team from start to finish. Like you bring someone else on from another job or whatever, you, you, it's like you're retraining them again. It, every job is completely different. So I, I like to keep the same team pumping through these, same harmony, the same same everything. But you're going to hit hurdles along the way. Like you're going to get, look, when you've got other jobs and you know someone might not pay you for other jobs, then you're funding a lot yourself and then, Something like GitHub, you're going to have hurdles throughout these processes of, of construction, finance, and everything like that, and and and, and you know your cash flow. So you will, you, you know, people got to understand in development, there's going to be hurdles from start to finish. And if anyone thinks there isn't, or then there never is going to be, there always will be. And I was talking to someone about this yesterday. There always will be if you're increasing the game. You're always going to hit another hurdle. And that's important to realise that what what is very clear you do, and you're very consistent in your approach is that when you're developing, you're really optimizing your operations. So yeah. you're making sure that there's no, like you said, people jumping around on different sites. You've got your team. You're being effective. You're now sitting on site in your nice little office here, right, making sure that that closure point is, mm. is in, in close site. I love that you do that. But at the same time, what you're simultaneously doing is you're upselling the project. Yeah. If you find little creations along yeah. the way with yeah. your team, that can enhance because everything you're doing in this in this whole development journey is investing in the product to yeah. give it its best creation to realize its best capital and I, I love that from a like a financial advice standpoint yeah. is you're not looking to cut cost to lose money no. you're looking to invest in cost well I'm not looking to cut cost to be able to I guess save more money for me. I, I'm looking to, to make inject a little bit more money to be able to increase Correct. that profit so a, and a, give what the client wants. Correct. Correct. So they're two completely different things. And they, yeah, and I think the other way I don't lose. think is because you can maybe not get a sale for six months. So I don't do that way. I know that way is, might be safer, but you've got to pick it's the not. right things, you know. And I, I vision if someone's going to spend this amount of money here, you know, we've included all these Sonos recess speakers. We've, you know, I've increased the micro cement. You know, we had glass balustrades and now we're going to these beautiful bronze uh, powder coated stainless steel balustrades would cost three times as much. Like, because. Yeah, these things change along the way and, and you're trying to create this product and 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 another thing that you got to do during the build is you've everyone knows as a builder or whatever you want to whatever you do there's always a lot of problems you've got to solve them super quick and super fast and not sit on them for weeks on end because all that does is disrupt the build so you got to be very proactive you got to make the decisions quick and solve the problems fast especially in these and get moving and keep going you just don't want to slow these builds down because at the end of the day I'm coming into Christmas now on this one and, and you know, we're, we'll go into the sale part now, like, you know, and there's options where, you know, if 
do you holiday let it over the Christmas period or or does someone come in and buy it straight off? Which we're not going to know until we get the buyers in here in a few weeks. So that's when we'll be able to, to to know that. But you've got a period. We're not coming in a winner. So I don't want to be pushing this thing in jail and now they're finishing it in you know, May and then we're coming in a winner and obviously you, know, you're hot, you don't have as many yeah. options. So Yeah, okay. So we're, we're, we're there now. And I think the good thing from last podcast, which was, which was much more tax strategy related, we talked a lot at the end about options. You mm. know what I mean? But the benefit is in this game, you've got options. And I think um, let, let's finish up talking a little bit about the options that you just mentioned around like, do, yep. do we sell it? We'll see in a couple of weeks. We can Airbnb it. We can move into it. The yeah, hot, There's yeah, a whole list yeah, which we talked yeah, about. Yeah. But also I want to talk about like what, we, what we're doing proactively to make sure you're in the best you're in the best fitness for a sale. Yep. So um, obviously we had uh, Matt and his team around here, uh, the McGraw boys. Uh, we called them around here last week. Uh, they hadn't been here for a while just to have a have a look, and they'll they'll blown away. And um, you know the comment I think the comments where you've, you've set another benchmark of something that is not on the coast again, uh, which is what you want to hear. Um, so you walk them around, you tell them everything, you skim, and we're staying on track with, with, with completion dates. And then we start to discuss strategies of selling this property. And sometimes you can be a bit eager, let's get people in. And, and, and Matt and that's pretty good, you know, and Trevor and that, they're just, and Jordan, and they're, they're um, in their approach. And like I said, I'll talk to, I'll talk to Matt every day pretty much, and, and I'll talk to Trevor a, a lot as well. And um, you're just trying to strategize because I've always, you're in property – you only get one crack, I feel. When you sell, you really only get that one crack. Like, we're fortunate enough for people to walk past them again and just fall in love somehow. But um, you only get one crack. And there's a lot, there's, people are very different. Like, some people can walk in here and vision it straight away and go, yes. Like, you can see it now anyway, but I'm talking like months ago, right? You get other people that walk in here and there's not a basin bowl sitting on top of a vanity top. If they can't, they still can't vision it. That, that's, and that's just how people are different, right? I don't want to bring a buyer in here that's got that different visualization. They can't see what I'm trying to, I guess, present sure, to them yeah. or, um, because you can lose that buyer. Yeah. They can just lose interest quite quickly. So we're trying to time this thing where when they walk in, it just you know, explodes in front of their face and like, this is what I want before anyone else wants it. Right. So that that's a strategy we're looking at now. It, it actually... Um, it went out to the database the other day. We decided to release it just to a database. We're still not live. We're still not on, on the web and all this sort of stuff. We released the database and we've already got traction on that. And that's not even a lot of, like, like giving it to a lot of people. We've already got some leads there now. So they're working with them. And then two weeks time, I'll probably start bringing them in. Um, and, and at that time, then you might just tweak that, tweak that a bit, whatever Matt and that says, you tweak it again a bit and you give it a bit more traction. Um, and, and you make a really bit of a really cool marketing campaign and then you bring more people in and hopefully we can get a lot of people attracted and then, and then, uh, they start falling in love and they, and they, and they buy the thing. So, but at the end of the day, if, if a sale doesn't happen in the time that you want, you sort of want to look at, um, other options. Um, these things aren't cheap to hold. And obviously when you've got other properties or all your own, own, own or occupier, they you know, you, you, you're paying. So you got to try and look at option B, C, D, and um, this is why I want to get this done. Coming to December, you're in the, the, the highest period. And obviously, I've been to a couple of set, uh, cinemas lately and see, you know, experiences have gone up 65% in regards to people holiday letting. It's pretty big in Australia now. So, And people are really liking this luxury holiday let. Um, there's a secret number. You've got to sleep over 16 people. You see a couple of guys doing on Instagram now. They're doing really well. It's a, it, as you know, it's a big motivation for me. It's something that I definitely want to get into. Uh, this wasn't meant to be that, but it, 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 we will go into that in the next ones. I want to have luxury properties uh, up the east coast or wherever. Um, and people are paying the money. Like I've got a client who people are paying like three grand a night to stay in these things minimum. You know, because you go stay at the Crown and you pay a thousand or twelve hundred a night for a studio where you can get sixteen people in two, three families and you all have fun together and have your own privacy in your own pools and being a way better property. Yep. So it's a big attraction now. And, um, you know, coming in this period, right, over doesn't sell, what, what am I going to do? Am I going to holiday let it? I don't know. Probably not because I think it'll take the cream off it. But there's just these options that you try and go yep. through. You know, different types of lending on the portion that you still owe on the property, you know, like is it, is it, is it, a, is it a low dock land? Is it a bank land? Is it whatever? And you're looking at timelines. Like I've set out seen the thing the other night on a piece of paper and I've got timelines of every month. From now, if it sells now to if it sells in 12 months and everything in between broken down in all these different lending sort of criteria and all these different scenarios and even if I rent other properties or holiday let other properties or potentially move into here. But 
there's all these things you've got to think about and you're probably going to stay up some nights thinking about it. But these these things you need to think about just in case you need to, it's no point in having something sitting here and just sitting here and sitting here and sitting here. Keep the attraction live on it and have other options in case it takes three or six months to sell, which I don't think this will, but it's just, you've got to have it. You've got to have that backup and, and, and they're, the, they're the structures and the games as you know that we're, we're going through now and um, before it's finished. And, and when you get to what I see, you've got so many more options. That's the thing. You've got so many more different loan options. You don't just have development finance. There are. There's lot. There's, there's lot, tons. Once there's, you get an occupational certificate, there's, there's yeah, a whole there's, lot of There's lots, lots of options of what you do with the property. There's lots of options with finance, yep. but the key on all those options is being proactive with your people. So you have to. if it's with your, your real estate agent, your accountant, your whoever account. it is, your finance broker, right? <laughs> I get a lot. You're your man. Your, your broker. Pro- yeah, your everyone. private lender. Like yep. you you got to have that proactive attack. Mate, I've already talked to... You know, a holiday, one of the best holiday let um, companies up here. Exactly. I spoke to them two months ago just to get a feel, that's and they'll exactly, come here and have a look. That's exactly what I'm saying. You've got to attack every. You, you can't leave you, the table. Because until, I've said this, I've said this to you a multitude of times, right? When you've been up late at night, right? I've gone. We've got so many options. Yeah. We've just got to be proactive with yeah, our options. Yeah. I have said that, but the thing is, is you. The good thing about you is you you are proactive, so you'll hunt to make sure you're okay. But you've got a plethora of options. But I also agree with something you just said. Then is you've got to make sure. You, you handle this right as well. So you don't F the marketing strategy. No, no. And I know you know what you're doing with those guys, but um, again, you've, and got, that's getting, you've that, got your options in your timeline. Yeah, and that's talking like I had this thing in my head and then I sit down and talk to Matt and he's and, 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 then, and then it changes because I listen to guys like that. Like I listen, you, that's what people understand is you don't know everything, right? And I've learned that at big time and I will sit and listen to people, not people that I want to listen to, I won't listen to them. But people that have been there, done it, or that's their profession. Like that's what they've done for twenty years, and they're the best at it. And we have, the, I think, the best best people around us. And if I talk to them about something that involves them, or that's what they deal with, and they tell me something different, I'm going to listen to it. Yeah, it's simple. I'm going to, I'm still going to make ultimately make the decision myself, but I'm going to take all that in. And you have to. You got to listen to the best people around you. And um, yeah, and I'll talk to those only those people about it, you know. And and that, um, yeah, that that's such same a, with you, you know. Yeah. We, we sit down and talk about these strategies, and then work out which way is going to be best because you've got to have these other plans in case things shift or things happen. You, you have know? to. And, yeah, those options for my holiday. Let that one and move into this one. Who knows? Yeah. I don't know. And and, and like I but said, but I just want to have them all there. And you need lots of options. Yeah. Like you, you do because you don't know what the universe is going to conspire no. to. Like no. you just don't know. No. Like I I believe in my gut that it will sell. Yeah, I do so, believe, and yeah. <laughs> that's so it. Do for for a lot of money, right? Because yeah. it deserves it, right? Yeah. But if it doesn't, we have contingency plans, right? And that's okay because that's what was meant to happen, yep. right? Yep. And it could be hypothetically the Airbnb option, the you live in it option, et cetera, et cetera, because we've got options, you've got assets, mm. and we can play that timeline. So I think the, the what I'm trying to say here is there's no black and white answer uh, to anything, and that's what gets so many people caught just up. Just be ready for it, and when the time comes, when, I'll know when have, people start have coming in. Have your cards, yeah. have your development but cards. But I'll know in the first week when people start coming in. And right, the same the same thing applies when you were selecting this property. You didn't have to have this property, right? Right now, you and I are talking about like ultimately three to four opportunities. Okay, mm. we don't have to have any of them, no. but whatever stacks up, whatever taps into your why and your creation, yeah. that will be what will execute. It won't be perfect, but it will be a good option. Yeah, that's the that's what I think you've done very very well from this finalized process. Even from the start, I know guys that develop property that didn't get freaking renders until mm. un- whenever they got them, like very late in the piece. You're getting them before you're even getting finance, and then that. you're utilizing that work again when you're selling. Yeah, because yeah, you create yeah. what you what you set out to create. Yeah. So, yeah, I just think proactivity in this sale piece is just so so critical. It is, yeah. And so now now we're in the we're in the um we're in the sales position now. This is where we where we go and. We've got a month of really attacking this. And, um, yeah, like I said, I, I, I do believe that this will fetch a really big number. And, uh, and it, I think it, deser- it definitely deserves to fetch a big number. And there's nothing like it. So it's it's an exciting part of, of, of it, um, of the process of development. And I'm, um, I'm excited to see what this thing actually goes from. I'm really excited. I'm actually really excited to see when I open that front door and I bring people in. That's when I start getting excited because I'd watch the reactions on their faces, and we'll see um, we'll see where the emotions take them, and see if we can get a, a crack and sell that sort of uh, changes changes the scope up here again. It will, and hopefully, you know, 
pretty sure like some of these properties have increased other people and which boost them properties up get these luxury properties here on the coast because the the, the location itself deserves it like we've got everything if not more than any other you know places we're close to you know big cities such as newcastle and sydney and 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 I, like, I think we can we look we're doing eight and a half million sales in apartments and stuff like that from these guys and they're doing these up in the middle of queensland in the middle of city so you can tell the money's here and 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 i think we can create some really cool stuff here I couldn't agree more, and I think I think I think you're putting out, and I'm putting out some eight in the universe. Just saying, yeah. we'll see what happens, but we'll come back to this video, right? I believe in you always having Two zeros it. Zeros touching each other. Yeah, because I kind of said seven last time, and it was seven, and I reckon there's an eight or an eight yeah. and a half, or a, could even be higher. Um, awesome, mate. Thanks for being so generous with your no. with your intel. All good, and um, I'm going to need to probably invest in a some sort of like sunscreen or alpha yeah, oil because the back of my head is just pumping apologies for the squinting the video guy the podcast man the podcast person would not let us wear sunglasses so another yeah, thing i've got, quick... I've got a, lot of, a lot of squinty going on my left yeah i'll have wrinkles tonight uh another <laughs> another quick thing before we go like it's pretty cool uh the last sort of few days i've been like, getting a lot of people riding in and um asking them some people want to catch up and meet we'll get back to them guys and there's other people who have, have, have asked if we can talk about topics and, and whatnot. So I think moving forward, um, if anyone wants to ask, you know, if there's a particular topic that we you yeah. want us to talk about, um, throw it out there. Um, we're getting really good feedback. Well, no one's written in that we hate your podcast yet, so that's the main thing. Everyone's saying they love it. So what, we'll see what see how it goes. But um, I got something the other day that said something. So can you get Justin to do his hair and sort <laughs> well, his, and sort his hand out and stop walking with a limp? So, so yeah, so write, write it in and, um, um, yeah, hopefully we can answer all the questions and, and uh, we hope you enjoy listening to it. So that's and, it. And, and I second that. It's, a, it's very, very important because we're, um, we're, uh, pre- we're, we're preparing for the next one, okay, yeah. um, the next podcast, and we've got a, we've got a bit of planning time um, up our sleeve, which, which we've been lucky with because we've just had so much we wanted to cover for you guys. So if there's some important areas you want, um, you, yeah, you do have to let us know because we've also got um, other interested parties, strategic yeah. um, contacts, networks yes. that we want to bring in. Yeah. And if you give us indication as to what you want the most first, we can make sure we, we um, orchestrate that agenda with those guys and girls. So, yeah, yeah make sure you let us know. 100%. Enjoy. Enjoy.